The encounter between King Solomon and some demons like Asmodeus and Beelzebub is an interesting story that you may not find in your Bible. However, you can get the full story from the Testament of Solomon, which is a pseudepigraphical composite text that was said to be written by King Solomon, but it is not regarded as canonical scripture by the early Jews and Christians. In this video, I will be concentrating on the encounter between King Solomon and some set of demons. Now, after King Solomon arrested the demon Ornais with the help of the ring given to him by Angel Michael, the story did not stop there. In fact, it got deeper and more interesting. When King Solomon met the bound demon Ornias, he asked him about his zodiac sign and the demon told him that he belongs to the water pourer sign. He went on to tell Solomon that he strangles men that lust after beautiful women on the earth. He often transforms himself to a woman and lure randy men in their sleep to have sex with him in their dreams and destroy their life. Then by the morning, he transforms himself back into the demon that he was. Apart from that, the demon can also transform himself into a lion. He also told the king that he was a fallen angel that used to work with Angel Uriel before his fall. But now he is one of the demons that the devil is using against humans. After hearing all that he does, King Solomon decided to engage the demon in a useful venture of cutting stones using irons for the temple. However, the demon who was afraid of irons because it is the material that was used to produce the chains that was used to bind him, refused to do the work but asked King Solomon to let him go, so that he can bring more demons to help in the work of the temple. Seeing that the demon was trying to deceive Solomon and escape from doing the assignment, King Solomon prayed and requested for Angel Uriel, who was the leader of Ornias while he was still an angel to help him compel Ornias. When Archangel Uriel came down, he commanded the demon of the sea to come out of the sea to tame Ornias and make him do the task that he was assigned to do. However, after a little time, King Solomon decided to release Ornias and gave him the ring to go and get Beelzebub, the prince of the demons in hell. After binding him he was to bring him back to King Solomon. The demon Ornias took the ring and went to meet Beelzebub. He told him that King Solomon has summoned him to appear in his palace immediately. Beelzebub challenged him saying, Who is this King Solomon that will order me to come to him? Do you know that I am the prince of hell and that I don't answer to any human? Ornias seeing that Beelzebub was proving stubborn and will not oblige him to come to King Solomon, decided to throw the ring on his chest to bind him up. The ring was so hot in his chest that he cried with a loud voice and was bound immediately. He followed Ornias and appeared in the presence of King Solomon. On seeing Beelzebub, the prince of hell before him, King Solomon worshipped God for giving him such an authority over demons that he could even summon a mighty demon like Beelzebub who holds sway in hell. King Solomon then asked Beelzebub, Who are you? Beelzebub replied, I am Beelzebub, the king of demons that live in hell. I am the one that apportions quarters and duties to all the demons in hell. King Solomon then told him that since he is in charge of the demons, then he wants him to bring all the demons to him for assignments that he wants them to do. King Solomon also asked him whether there were female demons that work with him. He would like to see the female demons first. Beelzebub left his presence and came back with a very captivating, beautiful lady demon. King Solomon then asked her what her name is and what her area of expertise is. She told him that her name is Anaskeles and she specializes in seducing men with her beauty and end up strangulating such men that fall for her enticement. She often dwells in the Golden Cave and moves from place to place as a transformed woman to look for men that she will tempt. She also controls the life of those that do black magic and worship the stars. The demon also influences the life of those that seek money through rituals, which she provides but with an exchange for their soul. Seeing that the female demon does a lot of evil things, King Solomon was surprised with her capabilities. He asked her how she was born a demon. She told him that she was born by the echoes of the voice of a man. She is often called the daughter of the voice. 
King Solomon asked her through which channel she travels, and she replied, It is through the channel of the full moon. He then asked her, Who was the angel that frustrates her movement in the spirit world? And she answered him that it is the angel that is with him and through him that frustrates her movements. King Solomon became enraged with her and told a soldier to strike her, but she pleaded with the king to have mercy on her, seeing that she is already under his authority. King Solomon then commanded her to spin the ropes that will be required for the building of the house of God, and she was bound to keep spinning the ropes day and night. After this, King Solomon summoned another demon to stand before him. And a demon was brought before him. He asked the demon, Who are you? And the demon replied to him in anger and also asked him back, Who was he too? The king became angry with him and told him he will punish him if he doesn't answer his question, who he was. And the demon told the king that he that is just a human that is born in this earth while he was the demon that was born an angel in the heavens. Does he think a human will have more power than an angel? The demon also told him that his star is still bright in the heavens and men like the king still worship him as the dragon. He believes the time will come when he regains back his glory in the heavens and have more power than all the humans on earth. Then all humans will revere him as a god by that time. In fact, the authority King Solomon now has over the demons is just temporary, as their time as demons to take over authority from him will soon come. King Solomon became angrier with the demon for saying these things and ordered that he be bound tighter and flogged with thongs of ox hide. The demon on receiving pains from the beatings retreated from challenging King Solomon and told him that his name was Asmodeus. He was in charge of causing disaffection problems among married couple that will lead to marriage crashing. He also makes the beauty of the bride worn out from the eyes of the husband, so that the husband will begin to look at other women outside wedlock. He makes humans fall into the sin of adultery and fornication. King Solomon then asked him by which angel he was often frustrated in his line of business. Asmodeus told him that it was Angel Raphael that often frustrates and stand between him and the throng of God. He was the one who bound him in the house of Sarah when Tobias went to marry her. Asmodeus had succeeded in killing seven of her earlier husbands until Tobias, who was told by Angel Raphael to burn fish liver in gall and the smoke will bound Asmodeus. Angel Raphael then carried the bound Asmodeus to the desert of Egypt. King Solomon then told him that he was King Solomon, the son to King David, and he then asked him the name of the fish that was used by Tobias to bind him. Asmodeus told him that it was the Glanos fish that is found in the Assyrian rivers. After this, King Solomon asked him whether there was something he was still hiding from him, but he swore that he has told him everything about him. He then pleaded with Solomon not to cast him into the water. King Solomon told him that he has more important tasks to assign to him, and he put iron on him and caused him to make clay for the construction of the temple. After that, King Solomon then ordered for the Glanos fish. Removing the liver and gall, he burned it as incense to keep the demon in check and make him do all the tasks that was assigned to him in the building of the temple. After Asmodeus, King Solomon summoned Beelzebub to his presence again and gave him a high seat to sit. He then called him the Prince of Demons, Why are you alone? Beelzebub answered and told him that he was the only angel that was left among the fallen the angels, but he now controls the Tartarus. He told him that he also has a child who hunts in the seas, but often comes to meet him his father for guidance and support. King Solomon then asked him, what was his profession and he answered that he was in charge of influencing the life of kings like him to be evil and a tyrant to their people. He also sent other demons under him to influence the life ordinary humans to believe in their kings and be lost. He influences the life of prophets, priests and other men of God by making kings to enact decrees that will affect the life of such men of God. He instigates strife, envy and misunderstanding that can lead to wars amongst humans. He also makes people fall into evils like sodomy and immorality. 
King Solomon then told him to bring up his child from the seas. But Beelzebub told him that he could not do that, but instead will bind and bring another demon that will be able to bind and bring up his son from the sea. King Solomon then asked him, Which of the angels frustrates him? Beelzebub told him that he was frustrated by no other angel, but the Almighty God himself. King Solomon became amazed that it was God himself that frustrates him. That means he was truly the king of the demons. The king then gave the assignment of sawing marbles to Beelzebub, and when he started sawing marbles, the other demons became terrified when saw that their leader is subjected to such punishment by the king. However, Beelzebub tried to deceive King Solomon that if he burns gum with incense and some other ingredients, it will make his building stand firm. But the king knew that the demon Beelzebub was just trying to deceive him because the incense will make Beelzebub stronger. He then rebukes him and told to face the assignment of sawing of the marbles he gave him. After dealing Beelzebub, King Solomon summons another demon who came with the whirlwind and caused dust in his presence. When the king asked him his name and what he does, the demon told him that he was Telpras, the demon of ashes and he was responsible for bringing darkness on the earth, and he also set fires on the fields of crops to bring poverty to humanity. King Solomon then asked which angel frustrates him, and he answered it was Azazel. The king summoned angel Azazel to bind him with great stones and commanded him to do the tasks that he was assigned to do by King Solomon. The story is not yet finished. Please subscribe for more and thank you for your support.